and we just have two and a half minutes here until we hit a hard okay. break. Um, okay. I'm, I'm concerned that the Supreme Court is going to play a role in this, that, that most of these scenarios, you know, where a state refuses to certify or where uh, Mike John, you know, if the Republicans can control the House and they get sworn in on January 3rd, on January 6th, they refuse to certify the vote, that then the Democrats will sue, it'll get thrown to the Supreme Court, six Republicans on the Supreme Court will say, aha, perfect opportunity to invoke the 12th Amendment, and, uh, you know, just, just like with... Uh, uh, the, you know, in 1876, we're we're just yes. we're going to give the we're going to give the presidency to the guy who both lost the popular vote and the electoral college vote. Uh, Rutherford B. Hayes in 1876. Yes. Let's say you. Yeah, well, you see the story of Rutherford B. Hayes and the 1876 election. Yes, I'm very very concerned that the Supreme Court will literally endorse the mayhem, and that and gives it legitimacy. If, and if the and if the Democrats say, well, the electoral college college couldn't meet in the Capitol because it was on fire, they'll say, well, too bad. Read the Constitution. If you don't get into your electoral votes in time to the National Archivist, that is, they must be, the list must be, trans, must be transmitted December 11th, or you're out of luck, and the vote must be submitted uh, on January, excuse me, December 17th, and if you can stop these official ceremonial activities, basically, no one ever took these things seriously. Now it's going to be serious because they stop it. It will go to the 12th Amendment, and there's no question in my mind, you throw it to our Supreme Court. We already had the Bush v. Gore decision, which basically said, don't finish counting the votes in Florida. Imagine, our Supreme Court said, don't count people's votes. Yep. If they could do that in 2000, and now this court is even further to the right, further in Trump's pocket. You yeah. are absolutely right, Tom. Our Supreme Court is a threat to democracy and a threat to this election. Well, and, and the rationale that Rehnquist used in that in that decision, and I cite it in, in, in my article over at HarvardReport.com, um, it was that uh, the Constitution says that you don't have a right to vote for president. You, know, and you, don't. you don't even have a right to vote for the electors for president. Those are chosen by the state legislatures. That's correct. And well, in fact, as, as uh, Congressman Jonathan Jackson has said, uh, you know, we don't have a right. There's no right. Read the Constitution. There's no right to vote in there. Yep. Yep. And this is a danger. And that's what the Supreme Court relies on. You don't have a right to vote. Exactly. And, and, and. Yep. Trump's president. Hail to the thief. Yep. Well, check it out at gregpalace.com and at hartmanreport.com. You'll get two slightly different takes on the same issue here. Uh, I, I think we should all be very concerned. Yeah, and Greg and I did not conspire to do this in advance. <laughs> Greg, thanks a lot. Always okay. great having you on.